Hi, I'm Andrew with JVR Industries. We're out of Buffalo, New York, and today we're going to talk a little bit about heat seals on a vacuum chamber machine and three common problems that will affect the integrity of your heat seal. Um, if you don't have a good seal on your bag, most likely what's going to happen is from the time that you pack the product from to the time that the product is delivered, at some point it's going to lose its vacuum. And with vacuum packaging, that is what's most critical, is maintaining the integrity of the package so that you can obtain maximum shelf life on your product. Now it doesn't matter whether you own a Promax chamber machine or possibly a Sipramac chamber machine, or even if it's an older Ultravac 2100 or a newer model, all vacuum chamber machines work on the same three principles when it comes to heat sealing. And there's three very important things that you need in order to get a good heat seal. You need good pressure on the seal bar, you need good temperature on the seal wire, and you need a good flat bag across the bar to prevent creases. So we're gonna talk about those three things in a little more detail. Now, poor seal pressure is going to result in a seal that looks spotty or broken. This is most likely due to the fact that the bellows or the pistons, depending on the type of machine you have, are leaking. Now on a Supermac machine, the bellows are located on the deck. There's gonna be four, one for each bar. On a Promax, they're located up in the lid. They're hidden, they're underneath the bellow covers. In order to get to them, you'd have to take the four bolts out, but they're up there. This is an example of a bellow that needs to be replaced. This is off an older Multivac AG800 machine, and if you put this underwater and sent air to it, what you'll see is a bunch of leaks along the sides. Now, other than testing a bellow underneath water to see if it's leaking, what you can do is run a vacuum cycle. You gotta locate your air assist port that's on your machine, and most machines will have one. If you have air going to it, you wanna disconnect that, and then what you wanna do is run a cycle under full vacuum, and here's the air assist port on a Promarx. Run it under full vacuum, and when it gets to the seal cycle, what you should hear is air being sucked in for just about a half to a second, half a second to one full second. If you hear it continue to flow into that bellow, then what's happening is it's never actually compressing because the air going in is leaking out of the bellow. Now if temperature is your issue, then your seal might look a little like this. It's going to look kind of faint, and it's going to easily pull apart when you tug on the ends. Now this could be due to the fact that you just don't have enough seal time, so your wire's not heating up enough, or maybe you're using the wrong seal wire. Now every machine uses a specific wire that's designed to be used by the manufacturer. There's different widths, different thicknesses, there's flat bands, there's concave bands, there's cut wires, there's so many different combinations. So make sure wherever you're getting your seal wire and tape from, you're getting the right thickness tape and you're getting the right wire for your machine. Now another reason your wire might not be heating up enough and you're not getting a good strong seal would be if your seal bar is made out of metal or aluminum, such as this Promarx. Now these bars are nice because they'll last forever because they're metal. But what can happen is if the seal wire is not properly isolated from the bar itself, you might have a situation where electricity will find its path of least resistance and bypass your wire, thus not giving you a seal in that section. So what you want to do is make sure when you're replacing wires and doing maintenance on the bar that the tape underneath the wire and the isolating plugs on the end and the isolating plates that are made of a phenolic material, those are all in really good shape and are replaced if necessary. Now the last reason for a pore seal that might result in a leaker is probably the most obvious, but I've seen it time and time again, where a bag is not properly laid across the seal bar. So what happens is when a customer will set this down, sometimes they're not paying close attention and it gets laid like that, which now what you're going to do is have a crease in your seal. Or they might be using too short of a bag for the product, which is going to result in the opening of the bag not coming together properly. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that the outsides are pulled taut and you got a nice flat surface to seal against. Now also if you're running a low profile product, you want to make sure your filler board height is set properly. So in this situation we're a little low, I like to go off the 50% rule where you have half the product below the, the bar and the other half the product above the bar. So in this situation you can see the product is completely below the bar. So we're going to bring over another filler board, now you can use a filler board or you can use feet underneath your filler board. But bring up the level a little bit and what you'll see is the bag is gonna lay much flatter and be a lot easier to place. So it doesn't matter what your seal issue is, whether it's due to pressure, 
temperature, or a poorly placed bag. And it doesn't matter what kind of vacuum chamber machine you have, JVR Industries is here to help. You can call us anytime or visit us online at jvrinc.com. We work with a network of distributors around the country that can offer local sales and service. So we'd love it if you got in touch with us.